All right, I'm super excited today for my, my CFN HQ Hangout because this was like something that I've been thinking about for a long time. I know we've been doing the athlete spotlights. The reason like we're doing this is because we've been doing the athlete spotlights and honestly, they were good. People would read them and they would like, you know, uh, like learn a little bit more about someone they may never meet. But I think this is so much more important as far as getting to know the community. You know, and, and picking really at, at, at random and, and those that can tolerate me to, to, to talk to because I, I think like we have a lot of, we have so many interesting people at CFN and I just think it's a great idea to, to share this with the community, especially in this virtual world. We were having a good conversation last night after the 5.30 about we don't know in the next time you'll see the same people anymore. You know, like you, you may, you think you, you only come to the 6.30 class, you never see the 6 a.m. people like, how much longer will that go on for? And, and we're continuing to get new members and, and new, new athletes in our community. And this is a good outlet to kind of introduce people, you know, and let people know like a little bit more information about you. So my first person in this series is, is a newer member of ours, um, Erica Mortimer. But you know what's crazy? And, and then, I'll, then we'll, I'll let Erica go for a little bit. We'll ask her some questions. But What's crazy about Erica, and I don't know if this is because of the sudden culture change in our facility, but Erica's a rather new member, and I don't view her like that. Um, when I view Erica in our gym, it seems like she's, she's been here for like 10 years. She's embedded in the community. And, and that's how you know for me, for being a, a gym owner, and my main, my main you know, point was to make our culture one that, that, that did that. You know, and, and that's the way I look. It's amazing how quickly you've become like part of the community. And, and what I mean that is when you come in here, I can tell that you feel like this is your home. You know, and, and that's what I'm talking about. You, you come in here, it seems like this is where you're comfortable at. You know what I mean? And there was a week where there was a transition. I don't know where to go. Like, I just don't know where to stand. But it seems to me now, like, you know, you, you, you're, you're buzzing around, you're, you're talking to a lot of other athletes and members and stuff. Um, you're involved in all the community things we kind of do and try to get together and, uh, and, and do stuff. And I think it's, uh, I think it's really, really cool. Um, what I want to first know is like, Erica, how long have you been doing CrossFit? And tell me that story, how you got introduced to CrossFit and kind of then how did you end up coming to our gym? Like, how did you find us? Can you just Give me that story first. Yeah, so I started CrossFit probably in um, 2012, actually. So I had been a little bit of a gym rat. I used to go to Gold's Gym, and I'd be there easy three hours, half of it probably talking more than actually working out. But um, I just, it's an, it was an environment that I felt very comfortable in, and I've always just loved. And at one point, and I don't even remember at what point, I had gotten away from that and I stopped working out. And, and I always say like now, I'm at the point in my life now that I realize that I'm always like one day away from never coming back. So for me, routine is very important. That's why some days I show up even when I, I don't feel like working out and I'll, and I'll tell the coach like, hey, listen, like I'm just going through the motions today. So for me, it's a big part of like, just showing up anyway, because I know what happens when I missed a day and then I didn't go back for three years. So I had, I found myself in this position. I wanted to get back in the gym, um, couldn't afford a personal trainer. And someone says, well, why don't you try CrossFit? Because you're working with a trainer. You're not just left on your own. And um, I knew someone who knew someone and I tried it and I'm like, oh, this is pretty interesting. This is very hard, but this is very interesting. And I love the idea of um, being in a group because I'll do more in a group than I'll do by myself. Um, I love the idea of having that coach right there. So that was really two of the big things that kind of grabbed me when it came to um, getting into CrossFit and getting back into the gym because I just wasn't in a place, uh, even though I'd done it before, I just couldn't get myself back to that place where I showed it up, up at a gym every day and worked out by myself. I, I just couldn't get there and CrossFit kind of just was a game changer for me. And it helps that, I mean, we have some of the coolest, coolest people that do CrossFit and I don't care what box you go to, what state, even what country, we just have such, it's such a cool community. 
Um, so I can't ever see myself doing anything but CrossFit. So. Yeah. So so let me let me let me ask you this. Oh oh, now I can see your face again. I couldn't see your face for a while, and I started to panic because I was like, man, we're gonna record this. We're gonna get some great audio, but I can't see your face. But um, perfect. I can see your face now. You're just not moving. But um. Maybe that'll work itself out. And then at least when I post this on YouTube, it won't it won't grab the screen of the worst face you make and put it as their uh, you, uh, front page for the YouTube video. But um, yeah, I mean that that seems to be like how it is with a lot of folks is that they they end up coming here number one is because they're intrigued with that type of exercise. They want to work out that hard, and then what they realize is it's the group. You know, it's the group, it's the community that like keeps them coming back here. And it's, it's such a cool thing with CrossFit gyms that really get that going. Um, so non-CrossFit related, because we could sit here and talk about CrossFit all day. Um, I see you're at work. Okay. I want to know, I want to know what you do. What do you do for a living? So, so you know what, my, my journey has been really crazy. Um, I worked in mental health since I was 18. My first job in mental health, I was a, a mental t health technician for a home for the mentally ill elderly. So we're talking some of the, the most severe mental health issues that you're going to see people hearing things, seeing things. That was my first experience. I got into guidance counseling. I was a guidance counselor for years and thought that that's where I would retire. Um, God has a sense of humor. I ended up opening up a, a drug and alcohol treatment center, which I sold a year ago, so now I work for the guys who bought my business. Mm -hmm. um, so I do all of the quality assurance. So they own seven treatment centers right now. They have three more in the pipeline that they're opening up. So I help manage, um, do quality assurance, licensing, accreditation for uh, all these facilities. But my background is mental health that's my passion my passion has always been helping people um so this is now like on the back end helping when um when did that all happen when was that how long ago was that process of you selling the uh the facility and now you working for the people that that bought it? how long ago did that start that was a year and a half ago now so um yeah, so I, I sold it a year and a half ago, and, and I thank God every day now, like because I don't I don't know as a small business owner that I could have survived uh, this pandemic. I, I just you know I watch what's going on with others with great great sympathy because I know the struggles and the stress of owning a business. And um, yeah, I was I was very lucky to be able to build something that was worth selling. Yeah. So that was a that was a blessing. What do you think? I mean, I I I got I gotta honestly believe that the current state, the current state of our society, is probably detrimental to those folks that are dealing with some mental his, mental issues right now, or some mental health issues. Like, what's the vibe inside these oh. homes right now? Like, is it like how are we gonna now? like counsel these people like maybe we're not right mentally because of the space we're in now we're trying to help these individuals which are in a totally different situation i mean how has it changed that dynamic at all it shifted so because i work we work with drug and uh, people who struggle with drug and alcohol issues um some of that hasn't changed because the the risky behaviors remain the risky behaviors which changed is the way mental health providers have decided to shift their services, which is a real concern to me, is that they've limited the face-to-face -face and they're doing more of the telehealth. And I understand why I totally get it, but it's the connection with people that ultimately helps people to get better. And, and I think that's where so many people are suffering right now is because they're missing out and they're craving, even if they say that they're not like a people person. Um, we are social beings and for so many people to be quarantined, distancing from family, from close friends, distancing from your therapist, I think it's having a real impact. Um, and I, I'm hoping that they'll get back to seeing people in person. We haven't stopped seeing in person. We are resident, we have residential facilities and we've kept the doors open at all costs, but you see the impact. Mm -hmm. on the staff staff not wanting to come in staff mm -hmm. are fearful 
Um, so it's, it's a bad situation all around, to be honest. Yeah, and, and, and it's a shame because I, I understand the social, like humans are social beings, and I see the social connection. I've seen it firsthand in drug and alcohol counseling that the, um, the, the people that are in there that need help and their counselors have this special relationship. I see it. I see it. They're, they're like they're like best friends. Um, you know, I, I used to um, date a girl in college that got a job shortly after in one, and just from talking to her, I used like she, she would almost become like fr not friends, but psychologically as she's helping them, she cares. Like they all care. You know what I mean? And that's genuine. And sometimes that only comes across in person. You know what I mean? Because even right. it, 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 it's hard totally. to develop that trust, don't you think, over, over virtual? Oh, for sure. Um, it's easier, like, at, as, a, as a therapist, as a clinician, like, I have an amazing bullshit meter. I just really do. Like, I, I just know when somebody's bullshitting me. I feel it from them. Um, and there's so much more that you can hide behind a screen, so I can't really get a sense of what's going on. So there's a lot of pieces that, that gets missed. And one of the, I've always said this, one of the most important things in therapists, with therapists and therapy and counseling is all about the relationship. So I don't care what kind of technique they claim to use. It all is it, it, based on that relationship with the counselor. And I've had people say to me, oh, I, I tried to see a counselor I didn't like them. And I said, you know what? Keep going and keep finding, keep searching because it's almost like shoes. You got to try what, try them on and see which one mm -hmm. fits. And they're not, well, not all counselors are a good fit for you, but you've got to make sure that that relationship, because that relationship is really what allows people to open up, be honest, be vulnerable. And um, without that, you really, you miss out on some of the healing that takes place. And, and this is, is just a barrier being, you know, having to do this virtually is, is a barrier between um, the therapist and, and, and the client, honestly. Yeah, it, it really is because I, I love what you said there about going and trying different therapists. I really appreciate that because it's like having a coach, right? Like a CrossFit coach. We're all teaching exercise, right? But what really connects you to that coach that makes you stay? You know, and that makes you, you're, you're listening to them. You have the utmost trust and the value in what they're saying to you. It's the same thing with a therapist. You, you therapists are all doing the same thing. You're trying to help people, right? So why isn't every therapist very really successful? Because it depends, right? It depends on that connection, that it trust depends. factor. It does. It does. It's the same in the coaching world. I want to that personalities. And yeah, so. Totally. Um, so I, I want to read something to you um, that I got. I got this this morning. So, um, like I told you, uh, I had talked to Dr. Madeline Barlow last week, who's working specifically with athletes and some some maybe maybe some identity issues and stuff after athletics. And um, I had sent, um, we sent out the YouTube to um, a lot of, the, like, everybody, right? And then we posted about it. And there, I, I wanted to send it to, to some people that I thought would really resonate with. And it's more people than you think, right? Just when you think you're alone in this and you're struggling mentally, it's sometimes it takes the first person to admit it publicly to make other people follow. So I want you to hear this message I got today after sending someone the YouTube of me and Dr. Madeline Barlow speaking. That talk was absolutely awesome. I wish that I had heard it months ago. I'm so impressed with your self-awareness as a coach and your ability to own up to the fact that you may have neglected some of these issues in the past. Before all of this happened to me, I identified myself as a rower, uh, a, 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 a penis, a straight A student. Now, having put a little bit more thought into it, I know that I'm a lifelong athlete, a musician, and an avid learner. And I'm so sad to say that I had to give myself a concussion and rip up my entire life from the roots to see that. In all honesty, I don't think I would ever have listened to someone in the past if they told me to stop overworking myself. I don't think that I was capable of doing that, even if I wanted to. For the future, I don't think that there's anything else that we can do to help other athletes like us realize this other than preaching what we know and sharing our story. I got goosebumps. Right. right. That's cool. That's cool, right? Because, and yeah. that was the whole point. I'm so happy I had that talk now because it helped one person. Yeah. 
and, and with, with with any of these talks I have, if, if it can resonate with one person, that's good. Because you know, you have people out there that are dealing with mental health issues that think they're alone, right? And they don't want to talk about it because yeah. You know, they want to know that other people are, are, are struggling too. It's, um, you know, it's crazy. I, I, I guarantee that you deal with that on a daily basis of people not admitting that they need help and they actually have a problem. You know, it probably yeah, happens all the time. They need help. Yeah. yeah well, so many times people just don't realize that they, they need help. It's easy for us to see because we're on the outside looking in, but sometimes when you're in the middle of it, um, you just can't even see it. And so, you know, I wrote that book and um, at the time, so it was all about learning to slow down because someone would say to me, Erica, you got to slow that F down. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, I am. I, I know. And he's like, you don't know. To know and not do is to not know. He's like, slow the F down. And it took me, it took me probably about three years to figure out what he was saying to me. I could not see it. I was, I was so in the middle of it that I couldn't even see it. And that's what happens to us sometimes. We get so stuck in where we are that we, we lose perspective um, and things become normal. I had gone into this house once where the mother was dealing with a son who had mental health issues and a substance abuse issue. And um, he came out and the kid was angry and he threatened to stab us. And I'm like, oh my God, this kid, he's threatening to stab us. And She's like, don't worry. She's like, I got all the knives. They're all locked up. And I look and she has a safe on her kitchen counter where she had all the knives locked up. And what had happened was that that became her norm. Like that was normal to her to have all of her kitchen knives locked up to where she didn't see that there was anything wrong with that. And we look at it from the outside and we're like, oh my God, this woman's crazy. Her son yeah. is crazy. But we kind of like, we drift into this place and then we don't even realize we need help until something bad happens, until you get the concussion, until you lose the job, until the relationship breaks up. And then you're saying, oh, maybe something else is going on here. And Tony Robbins says that it takes um, great pain or great pleasure to get somebody to change. So we have these behaviors and it usually takes something either very painful or very pleasurable to get us to change. And too often it's, um, it's the pain that gets us to move. So we can be sitting here in this spot of being depressed and you don't even know you're depressed. You don't know you're de depressed until you're not depressed anymore. And you're like, oh my God, what was that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's unfortunate that we, we don't see it when we're sitting there. Yeah. You know, I, this is like, I wanted to ask you this question because I don't think there's ever a right answer. I just want to get your opinion. Do you ever think someone just needs to hit rock bottom to get it. Do you think that sometimes yeah. you're like, this is the only thing that's going to change this person. They actually need to hit rock bottom yeah. so they wake the F up, absolutely. you know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And unfortunately, there's some people that their bottoms are so different than like what I would consider my bottom. My cousin, he's the, um, a heroin addict. I'm like, oh my God, his bottoms have bottoms. It was just this like endless, every time you think, okay, this will wake him up. He just saw his best friend being pulled out in a body bag. Nope, that wasn't, that wasn't enough for him. You know, you think this would be enough. He overdosed and they had to hit him with Narcan. Nope. So, um, yeah, I think, I, I, I think it goes back to what Tony Robbins says is that it takes great pain or great pleasure. And, yeah, I think, I think sometimes we have to hit the bottom. And I, and I think for me, that's been true in my life um, where – I know I should do something. I know I should make a change and I, I don't do it until it gets so bad. And, and my experience has been like, I sometimes feel like God takes a crowbar and removes me. Like it's kind of like God whispers in my ear and says, all right, Erica, find another job. This is not the job. This is not where you're supposed to be, not where you're supposed to be. And I don't listen. I don't listen. I don't listen. And so, bam, like, then the, the job is ripped out from under me, and now I have no income. So, it, it's always, like, taken, for me, God, like, okay, I'm going to get the crowbar out and remove you since I told you to do it, and you didn't do it on your own. Yeah, um, that's yeah. That's my experience. So, I, I see, um, so you mentioned God. We don't want to talk too much about God, but are you, um, I look at you, and I'm like, Erica's probably spiritual. She's probably very spiritual. And no matter who you believe in, is that true? You're spiritual? Spiritual, but not religious. 
So let, let me hear what, let me hear the, some of the things you do that are spiritual and not religious. Would you share some of those? Um, yeah. Okay. So here's kind of a funny thing. This I is the stuff that Erica was like, in, in St. John, by the way, this is the stuff that Erica would have liked to be prepared for, right? That I, I said I was just going to ask her questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So when I, I'm going to say got released from the bounds or the, the chains of religion, um, one of the things that, so I have in my basement, you, you know, I'm a, so I'm a Reiki master now and I practice Reiki, I practice meditation. So I set up a little altar and I have crystals and all kinds of little spiritual things on there. So, but on my altar, I have a little Buddha sitting next to the blessed mother because I can, because I can. I read this book. It was called, um, it was like a religion of your own. And I was like, that is mind blowing. I can basically create my own religion. Like I don't have to follow the rules of man per se, but there are, but there are spiritual principle. And I think there are spiritual rules and like kindness for one, you know? Um, so I, so yeah, so that was like really freeing for me when I put that little Buddha next to the blessed mother, that was like, cause that was such like a, Taboo yeah. before. Mm -hmm. I was like, huh. Yeah, that's like um, right next to each other. That that that's so interesting. Uh, so now I kind of want to ask you about Reiki and meditation. Um, so yeah. uh, I, I think I'm the type of person that needs to see someone if I'm going to commit to someone something, right? So let me give you an example. Um, I know I need to meditate more. So I paid for the Headspace app. And the reason is that my yeah. control, and I won't do it, right? Because that my control, like I don't have to meet someone. It's like, oh, I'm just not going to do it today. So I was doing it for a week. And then I took off for a week, did it for two weeks. And I'm like, and actually, I always leave it when it's kind of giving me some benefit. And I'm like, ah, oh, I feel better. You know what I mean? I don't have to do it. I, I like go off of it. But for me, it should be like a ritual once or like, I don't care if it's an everyday five minute or like once a week where it's prolonged and I don't know what the right answer to meditation is because I feel like if you get really good at meditation, it's not just relaxing. It's like going deep into meditation. Right. Well, here, I, I'm going to tell you something and it might be a little, sound a little out there, but I look at CrossFit as a form of meditation because if you think about meditation, it's this almost clearing your mind or maybe um really focusing in on one task and you know when you're in the middle of like a, a recreating intense crossfit workout and you can't nothing else exists whatever problems you had at work they don't in that moment nothing else exists except i have to do 100 box jumps right now like i'm not worried about my phone is it ringing nothing else exists so um, lifting, for example, like when we do back squat and the weight's really super heavy, I have to focus. I have to bring my attention inward. I have to focus on my breathing. I have to be right there right now in that moment, or I'm going to fall over. That's just how it is. So to me, I look at CrossFit as meditation that we do every day. You have to control your breathing. You know, you have to focus inward. You have to be paying attention to you know, and there's, and there's so many things to pay attention to, like, are my knees going out or my heels coming up? And, and it's, and it's bringing that attention and that awareness right here. And that's really what meditation is, um, without all the stimulus. I mean, how many times have you done a workout? You don't even know what song's playing. No, you're right. You know I mean? Cause you're just right here. Right now. You're right. So I think, I think we do meditation. We just don't even realize it because someone told us that to do meditation, you had to be sitting you know, cross-legged, you know, playing some spiritual, like they, someone told us that's how we have to do it. I, and I don't always think that that's the case. I think it's, I think meditation like that is a beautiful practice if you could get there. Um, but it is a practice and you have to practice it. It doesn't, it's not something that comes natural because we tend to have um, monkey minds where it just, the thoughts are just like this little hamster on a treadmill. Mm -hmm. you know? I worked with uh, a life coach and this was years ago and she says Erica I think you could benefit from meditation because you know I was like always racing I was always mm -hmm. I was always easy doing something but I was really getting nowhere at the same time mm -hmm. 
And I was like, okay, I'll do whatever you tell me to do because I like, I want my life to be better. And she says, okay, well, let's just start with meditation. So tonight, before you fall asleep, I want you to pay attention to the space between your thoughts. I'm like, okay, got it. Like I, cause I, everything in my life was a checklist. I can, mm-hmm. got it, check, I'm gonna do it. So I lay down and I'm like, oh my God, my thoughts have thoughts. Like there are no spaces. I couldn't, I, I couldn't stop. Yeah, I just went through it and my thoughts had okay. thoughts. Before you said that, I just went, I saw the image in my head as you're telling me okay. about this. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. I used to wake up in the middle of the night and have like an idea of something I wanted to do the next day. Like, so my brain just never, ever, ever shut off, but it took, it took a lot of practice. Um, and then you can, then you can start to slow it down and you start to recognize, um, what doesn't feel good. And, and, you know, it's like, I look at it as a tool, a tool belt. So I have a fully stocked tool belt now. I didn't always. Um, my tool belt before was pretty empty, but now I have the tools. I said, oh, okay, I know what I, I know what I need. I need to, you know, do this right now. And I do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, as you, it was so crazy. As you're saying it, like, I can even describe what my thoughts had looked like. They were actually in these bubbles and there was a space in between them that was like a black with a fade into gray. And those were the spaces. At first it looked like a brain with the different thoughts. And then I realized that the one thought you were talking and I started thinking about other things that were in that space. So I was like, Oh, I got to stop myself. I'm literally not, I'm not paying attention anymore <laughs> until you said that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, um, so that's what I used to do. I used to ask, I used to answer questions that people didn't even ask me yet. <laughs> like, you know, I, I'm like, what am I, I can carry on the conversation by myself because I'm answering questions. You didn't even ask me. Yeah. That's nuts. You know, it's funny. You said CrossFit's like meditation. And I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm big on myself and the rest of my coaches getting professionally educated. And over these last, um, like, I would say the last year, I've become a better coach, not because I know more about exercise, because I've invested a little more time in understanding the mind and understanding the human yes. being. And, and, and my mission really, even my tonality when I coach and the way I say things, is actually to change people's mindset of what the workout is and to get over like people's mental struggle with doing the workout because that's where it's written instead of do what's best for you here. I'm going to give you some options. I'll work with you. You don't have to kill yourself. Like for instance, the other day I took class in here and carried the, the workout was um, 200. Oh, it was yesterday, 200 meter object carry, right? It was a 200 meter object carry. You were here. And then we did hang power cleans, right? Yeah. So we didn't hear in the at home people yeah. didn't about swings. I look at that as pretty intense, right? Um, right now, um, mentally, the high intensity activity um, is is not good for me. Okay, it's not. It's not because then I lose my coaching knack. Like I, I get burnt out. It adds to my stress and my anxiety about what we're doing here, running this business. And I realize that now I need to change it. So as a coach, my own coach, I need to change this. And really, it's been like a long time. I observe like Carrie working out, and I observe like other people working out, and I kind of I learn from their styles, right? And honestly, I was just like. You know, I'm going to do this workout, but I'm going to customize it for me because I want to be able to customize it for other people. So I did a sandbag carry only 100 meters, and I put my um, feet up on that box I had did and did elevated hip bridges. Now, when I told you guys the stimulus was only three or four sets to get 40, I never got 40 because the exercise was so hard. So I did three sets, and I think I was getting a 25, 27. I didn't give a shit what the number was and what the workout was because I wanted to do something that was going to be healthy and move me forward and not add to all this negative stuff going on. And I want to be able, and I'm, the way I'm showing people now, it's like, you know, we don't have to do hang power cleans. We could do the other stuff. And, and you know what's better? That our classes are going to follow that tone so we can actually, the people that do want to do that, we could have them spend an hour on it. We could coach them for an hour on that specifically, right? Because our general population doesn't need to crush themselves, but I get it. Some people want to be really good at CrossFit, but don't do it at a cost of what's on the board. Like, don't do bad stuff because you want to do what's up there. Work out, good technique. Work out for the sake of working out, right? That's what it's about, right? Working out with people of like-minded goals and, and visions that you have. And, and as a coach, that's what I've been trying to get people to do. You know, and I know the more I coach like that, the other coaches see it and they're starting to get like that because we're finally understanding that if we really want to make CrossFit for everyone, we got to make it for everyone. 
people that maybe yeah. don't need high intensity activity, people that just need functional activity, and we got to be able to do it for a large number of people. That's why I love that we have small numbers now. I don't think I'm increasing it over 10 because I like to be able to have that control over class and be able to like, with class of 18, if you want me to customize something for you real quick, I couldn't really do it because I may be stuck over here, right? This gives me an opportunity to do that. And although we may not drill the toes to bar like we did, you know when we will do it? In an hour long gymnastics class. You know what I mean? Where you can really learn it, not in five, 10 minutes in a big class. Like let's right. really learn it. Let's go in a small group of eight to 10 and let's drill this stuff so you get good at it, you know? Um, and, yeah. and that is all from mindset stuff. That That is like redoing the way we offer fitness is all from learning more about the mind. You know, it yeah. is. I have great respect for it. Great respect for well, it. I think, so, you know, it, it's funny because you talk about learning um, about the mind. So, so many of us, we're on this journey to ultimately learn more about ourselves. Like that's how mine started out. Like I just, I needed to learn more for me. And if I can help other people along the way, that's great. But one of the things that I, I found was the more that I connected to self, the more I could connect to other people. And I, ha and I have a feeling that that's what you're seeing is the more that you connect to self, the more you're able to connect to other people in, in, a, in a deep and meaningful way that you probably couldn't before because we have all this stuff that just kind of gets in the way. You know what's crazy is I never understood and myself included, so I was able to realize that I had, uh, I, I was having mental issues with exercise and fitness in general, like identity and fitness, to see that other people that were coming to our gyms, I didn't see that till I saw it in myself. You know, I didn't see that in anywhere else, and then I see it, yeah. and then I see it, and I'm like, wow, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. You know, and, and, yeah. and it's tough, and it's, and it's tough because, you know, we see people trying to do the workouts, they doing the workouts, and you really shouldn't get hurt doing this stuff. You should do stuff that makes you feel good, right? Like, you know, unless you want to, and I know there's those competitive people, and I get it. You want to compete, same thing. If you want to train for a marathon, you're probably going to bang up your hips, right? But you want to go compete in it. That's different. That's different. Right. You know, you don't have to run a marathon to be in the best shape of your life. And you don't have to be a CrossFit stud to be in the best shape of your life, mentally, physically, spiritually, you, you don't need to do that, you know, and I'm finally learning that stuff. And it's good to have people like you that I'm sure after people hear this, will be able to reach out to you as a trusted source to be like, you know, I, I need some advice or I, I'm, I'm going to need, I'm going to need you to perform Reiki on me. You know, I want you to help me through meditation. Yeah, no, I, would, coaching. I would, I would love to be a resource for people. Um, you know, I, I think, one of the hardest things once you realize you want help with something is knowing where to go and how to like kind of how to get there um so if it's not something i can help with i definitely i can help point people in the right direction and i had mentioned to you um i would love to be able to give away more copies of the book so i'm going to be bringing in a box yeah. um if you wouldn't mind giving some away and if anybody's yeah. interested and yeah. you know and i think it's a really good time too i mean we're still kind of on lockdown, um, people still have a little extra time on your hands. And I think this slowing down piece has been really hard for people because we're used to this, you know, this pace. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and in that book, I just kind of talk about like how what my journey was to really being able to, to slow down. But I definitely would love to be a resource um, yeah. for anyone. Really cool. you know. And what the most important part is about this, we're part of a community. You know what's special about a community? the trust value inside the community. And, and that's a reason why we're doing this because there's so many, we had a conversation yesterday, it'd be a good idea to put people, like let people know what they do for a living so people can use them because you had contacted me for a service and I knew someone right away in the community that I trust. So hopefully this takes care of a lot of that too, is like people will understand what's out there because guess what? All we got is us, we're a community, right? Let, let's we trust each other, you know? And, um, and that's one of the first steps in getting help for anything, mentally, landscaping, painting, trust. Right. <laughs> trust. And that's why, you know, and the other thing is like, suffering is optional. You don't have to suffer. Suffering is really optional. Um, you know, and if you're suffering and just reach out, that's why I would say, have them reach out to you. You can reach out to me, grab me, pull me aside if you see me. 
um, because you suffering really is optional. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. Well, listen, I think we had a great conversation. So let, let, let's let people, yeah, if we go longer, what happens is people don't listen all the way through. So oh, yeah. yeah, I thought it was great and I want people to listen. So let's, um, we'll, we'll end it there today. And again, we may end up back on here together at some point, but uh, you know, it's all good. Um, so um, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to, uh, to talk to me and stuff. I, th I think it was great. I honestly think it was great. So um, and then I'll see you uh, next time we're in the gym. That's right. All right, Eric. I'll see you later. Yeah. No Thank problem. You,